Hey, this is Mrs. Hasmer, and today's lesson is on finding equivalent ratios. This is grade six, module one, lesson five for Eureka Math. Okay, so it says solving problems by finding equivalent ratios, classwork, example one. A county superintendent of highways is interested in the number of types of vehicles that regularly travel with his county. In the month of August, a total of 192 registrations were purchased for passenger cars and pickup trucks at the local Department of Motor Vehicles, DMV. The DMV reported that in the month of August, for every five passenger cars registered, there were seven pickup trucks registered. How many of each type of vehicle were registered in the county in the month of August? Okay, so the ratio was five cars to seven pickup trucks, or five to seven. The total register for August was 192. So for every, uh, so for every five, there were seven. If I add the two numbers together, five plus seven, you would get 12, okay? And then I would divide 12 by 192, okay? And I would get 16. So if I multiply the per unit, the 16 times five, I would get 80 cars that were registered for August. And if I multiply the seven by 16, I would get 112. So if they ask you the to, uh, you know, for each one, you would have cars registered, trucks, and then the total is the 192. Okay, we are on page 19. Uh, using the information in the problem, write four different ratios to describe the meaning of each. So if we go back, take that five to seven, and I told you, you kids, to multiply, start with two. So multiply five times two, and then seven times two. And then I would, whatever that ratio is, and then th uh, do five to seven again, multiply by three, both numbers. That would give you another equivalent ratio, okay? and keep going but usually I told you to do two three four and five if they ask you for you know like the that's what I would do the first four the smallest numbers unless you want big numbers that's fine you're gonna make a tape diagram that represents the quantities in the part to part ratios that you wrote so you're gonna have five to seven um, so five boxes for the cars seven for the trucks um, and if everybody should have a book at home, so make sure you make the tape diagram. How many equal size parts does the tape diagram consist of? So if you count five plus the seven, you would have your answer here. Okay. And what total quantity does the tape diagram represent? Hint, count the boxes. What does it represent? Oh, okay. E, what value does each individual part of the tape diagram represent? So if you don't understand that, it just means what each one little box means. What is it representing? And this was registered vehicles, right? So it would mean one of them. F, how many of each type of vehicle were registered in August? So you could go back to that slide where we're multiplying by 16. And this says homework, but we were going to do this in class together. Um, page 21 from the workbook, some of the students didn't have the questions all the way, so we said we were just going to go to page 22. Okay, so number one, last summer at Camp Oki Fun Oki, the ratio of the number of boy campers to the number of girl campers was eight to seven. If there were a total of 195 campers, how many boy campers were there and how many girl campers? So I'll give you a hint what to do. 
I would add these two totals together. So 8 plus 7 is 15. And I'm going to divide 15 into 195, which should be 13. Okay? And then each one of your boxes for your tape diagram would be worth 13. So in other words, if you wanted to find out the boy campers, you would multiply... 8 times 13 and the girl campers you would multiply 7 times 13. Number 2 is page 22. The student to faculty ratio at a small college is 17 to 3. The total number of students and faculty is 740. How many faculty members are there at the college? How many students? So again, you're going to add these two, divide it into 740, and then that will be your unit. And whatever number that is, you're going to multiply 17 by um, to get for the students total. And then whatever you, whatever you get when you divide it here by 20, you're going to take that number, multiply it by 3 to get your number of faculty, because that's what they asked you for faculty, and then the students. Okay, number three, the Speedy Fast Ski Resort has started to keep track of the number of skiers and snowboarders who bought season passes. The ratio of the number of skiers who bought season passes to the number of snowboarders who bought season passes is one to two. If 1,250 more snowboarders bought season passes than skiers. How many snowboarders and how many skiers bought season passes? This one you could um, make your boxes, you know, put your little box. So one for um, the ratio number of skiers who bought season passes to snowboarders. So skiers would be one. And snowboarders would be two boxes, okay? And if 1,250 more snowboarders bought season passes, you could put 1,250 in one box, 1,250 in the other box, and then put 1,250 for the skiers, okay? Now, if they ask you the total number of um, snowboarders, then you would have to add the two boxes together of 1,250 and 1,250 to get your total. This one's kind of tricky. That's why I'm going over this. The ratio of the number of adults to the number of students at the prom has to be 1 to 10. Okay? Last year, there were 477 more students than adults at the prom. If the school is expecting the same attendance this year, how many adults have to attend the prom? So this one, because this unit is the adult to student, just kind of push that over here, and you're going to actually count what boxes are left then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you're going to divide 477 by nine to get to your uh, unit, okay? And then it will tell you how many um, adults attended the prom. Okay, thank you.